We knew this was going to be an action-packed week with Brees Hall no longer on the snap count, with Cooper Cup coming back, and with JT back with the Colts. Well, that didn't go as planned, but still, ton to talk about here. We will start with the London game. I mean, what we had was the most beautiful sight in the entire world. I mean, I was sitting here relaxing on the Sunday morning live stream and just watching Travis Etienne finally take the volume that we've been saying to go out there and buy, go out there and buy, go out there and buy, and turning it into production. Every single week this season, ETN has been seeing a 90% opportunity share. If you're looking at his snaps, if you're looking at his carries, if you are looking at his targets, Travis ETN is getting everything in this Jacksonville Jaguars offense. It comes to fruition where he has 136 rushing yards, two rushing touchdowns. He has 48 receiving yards as well. Almost totals 200 yards in Jacksonville. Other big side note is Calvin Ridley has himself a day. Lawrence looks good overall. Now, honestly, that stuff doesn't really change our opinions that much, right? We already knew Ridley low in wide receiver one, high in wide receiver two. Naturally, you're going to see some volatility. Trevor Lawrence probably is still pretty good quarterback. We already kind of understood that. And we already knew ETN was a three down bell cap. The one thing that I didn't know and the one thing that we have to go through and make a correction on is I was expecting with Zay Jones coming back into this offense, Christian Kirk to potentially slide down to a smaller role. That did not happen. Now, if you're going to be looking at the snaps and route run data here, doesn't tell the entire story. You did have Christian Kirk with 73 snaps, 45 routes run, which actually led the team. Keep in mind, Zay Jones did leave this game with a knee injury. But even before Zay Jones left, Christian Kirk was still playing in two wide receiver sets, which is not what we saw before the Zay Jones injury. I was worried that Christian Kirk was going to go back to being the slot wide receiver in Jacksonville. And that is no longer the case. Kirk is locked into two wide receiver sets here. Now, going over to the Buffalo side of things, really, Stefan Diggs is great. Gabe Davis is going to have massive spike weeks. We already kind of understand this. The one thing we want to be looking at will be the running back usage. I'm not worried about James Cook having five carries, negative four rushing yards. We know the efficiency is going to ebb and flow. You'll have some weeks where he's very efficient, some weeks very where he's very inefficient. What I'm worried about is the usage. And we talked about this last week, and it's happening again you're kind of seeing this turn into a three-man running back by committee here where you have Damian Harris and Latavius Murray with both 11 snaps. If you're looking at the volume, you have Damian Harris with three carries, Latavius Murray with two carries. You have, I mean, this backfield still being led with James Cook, but slowly but surely if these secondary running backs keep taking more and more, James Cook will have to be sliding down our rankings. Now, going over to Tennessee, I mean, obviously, not a good team, right? But still, DeAndre Hopkins does overcome this. It looks like DeAndre Hopkins is a fully over the ankle injury where he actually runs 36 out of 37 potential routes. Y'all know last week, we were kind of seeing a trend of DeAndre Hopkins getting used less and less and less in Tennessee. Looks like that was a function of his ankle injury and not something that we have to be worried about anymore. Now, you still have to be very much worried about how bad this offense is. Like you have Derrick Henry with only 43 rushing yards and Taji Spears actually steals a rushing touchdown. You have Derrick Henry with 37 snaps in comparison to Taji Spears at 32. So yeah, Derrick Henry, if the Tennessee Titans are going to go out there and if they are going to win the game easily, he will be the guy. But unless that happens, it is going to be a split and really streaky here with Henry based off usage. Going over to Indy. Oh my gosh. Jonathan Taylor went from, in my mind, a running back one once he signs, then down to a mid running back two once we get the snap count news. And whenever I got the snap count news, I went, oh, okay, well, I guess that means Jonathan Taylor is going to get 60% of the backfield. Zach Moss is going to get 40%. Still starting Jonathan Taylor as a mid running back two with upside. Apparently, the snap count means Jonathan Taylor is going to play 10 snaps compared to Zach Moss at 53. Now, obviously, I don't think this is the plan going into the game. What I think happened is Zag Moss went on a heater. Zag Moss had 165 rushing yards off of 23 carries. And when Zag Moss was playing the way that he was, there's no real reason to get Jonathan Taylor involved, especially to game where Anthony Richardson goes down. The game's already out of hand in the first place. So I don't want to be overreacting or anything with this Zag Moss usage. Still, it's clearly going to be Jonathan Taylor going forward. A very, very frustrating with what we had this week, though. And I do owe you a massive apology. If we went out there and we said for you in a live stream to play Jonathan Taylor over another option, clearly horrendous call when the man plays 10 total snaps. 
Josh Downs, we'll talk about him in our waiver wire video tomorrow. We already have looked at him a bit, so please make sure you are subscribed for that video tomorrow. Now, going over to what we have with our next game, the New Orleans Saints, New England Patriots, not even a game here. You have Derek Carr, not even with too impressive of a performance. You have 183 passing yards, two passing touchdowns. Alvin Kamara has himself a day. What's actually interesting is, I mean, you get some Miller usage, but keep in mind, it's a complete blowout. Looking at the usage here with running backs and wide receivers in New Orleans, not really going to be too impactful when the game's 34 to zero. The target volume does go down a bit for Kamara, but he rushed the ball a little bit more. He gets to the rushing touchdown. Not too much to discuss. Alave was dealing with an ankle. This is going to be something that maybe we have to monitor going into this next week. Alave still got there with the receiving touchdown. But like we said, 34-0 can't take much. I mean, maybe you'd say, well, Mason, the 34-0 or Madre Stevenson must see eight targets, right? He must get every target out of his backfield. Well, no, that does not happen at all. Uh, for whatever reason, in a complete blowout, Ramondre plays 27 snaps compared to Ezekiel Elliott at 25. Ramondre Stevenson in a game where the Pats lose by 34 has a total of two targets for zero receptions and zero yards. Mac Jones gets benched for Bailey Zappi. Bailey Zappi looks even worse than Mac Jones. And in New England, nobody is startable. Doesn't matter if it's a full BBR format. It doesn't matter if you have no tight end, you want to play under Henry. This is a bottom three offense in the NFL, and you cannot look at anybody here. Now, as we pull up our next team, let me remind you, over there on Underdog Fantasy, we hooked up everybody with a Justin Herbert special pick for week six, more than less than half a total yard. That doesn't matter if you signed up to Underdog with promo good flock two years ago, last year, today, yesterday, tomorrow. Sign up with code flock, you're going to get a 100% deposit match up to $500. Plus, you're going to be getting our updated rest of season fantasy football rankings and tiers. Hop into drafts with us this week. And also, if you're new to Underdog, not only are you going to get the Justin Herbert special pick em, but you are also going to be getting a Jordan Love special pick em, more than less than half a total yard for Monday night. The best birthday present you could give me for my birthday on Tuesday will be going and signing up to Underdog with Code Flock. But going over to our next game, looking at Baltimore. I mean, Lamar Jackson, a little frustrating. Lamar has historically struggled against Pittsburgh. He still gets there based off the 45 rushing yards. I mean, he's not the worst quarterback in the world. Obviously, it would have been really nice to see a rushing touchdown. No running backs are startable. You have Just Still, Gus Edwards split in the backfield. Neither of them are talented enough to be viable in fantasy if they are running back by committees. Zay Flowers dominates with targets. He has 11 targets with both Odell Beckham Jr. and Rashad Bateman in this game. And the usage for or Bateman indicates that honestly Bateman may be getting I don't want to say benched but maybe falling down this depth chart especially with him dropping a key key pass now going over to the Pittsburgh side of things they were actually really good I mean I thought Kenny Pickett was going to be limited with the knee injury no Kenny Pickett had one of the better games of his season so far that's not saying much when it comes to the running back usage Najee Harris and Jalen Warren still split the backfield pretty much 50-50. You have Najee Harris, 37 snaps, Jalen Warren, 32. We talked about this all week, but really with these running backs, neither of them are startable unless the other guy goes down. This offense isn't good enough. These running backs aren't talented enough to be actually viable in fantasy in a running back by committee. If you were to see an injury to Jalen Warren, Najee Harris is a must-start back. If you were to see an injury to Najee Harris, Jalen Warren's a must-start back. So it's an interesting spot where they're both kind of in like the Tyler Algier mold where you can start them if you really need to, but ultimately they're more so just handcuffs to each other. Now the one player I want to give a shout out to, George Pickens, immaculate game. And we are going to stand by what we said this week. Y'all know back week one, we labeled George Pickens as a buy low candidate whenever people were valuing him as a wide receiver four. We said, okay, Deontay Johnson's out. So it looks like Piggins is going to see a considerable amount of target volume. Looks like Piggins will slide into wide receiver one here. Let's buy him. And then after we get through the stretch of games with no Deontay Johnson, going into week six, George Piggins will be a sell high candidate. Still stand by that. You have a bye week for Pittsburgh this next week. Afterwards, Deontay Johnson may be back. I think Piggins may slide down. So I know it's frustrating to hear buy low, then sell high. I know everybody's league is not that, that active, but if you can go through and sell George Pickens as a top 24 wide receiver, I'm about it. Now going over to Houston with the Texans, I was excited because you get a couple key offensive linemen back. I was going, oh, okay, maybe Damian Pierce can be a little bit more efficient. Nope, nope, nope. Damian Pierce actually interesting with 20 carries, but only 66 rushing yards. Damian Pierce does see 34 out of a potential 59 snaps. So it is nice to see the underlying volume. The issue is just not being efficient at all. 
I mean, CJ Stroud doesn't really do that well. Nico Collins has a step back. Tank Dell has a step back. They both only have four targets. Robert Woods has nine targets, leads this wide receiver room. And Dalton Schultz is the main guy here now. I don't know if we can be super pumped about Dalton Schultz going forward. I think with Nico Collins, probably can't rank him as like a wide receiver one, probably still like a mid wide receiver two, low and wide receiver two, maybe even now. We'll have to dive into this a little bit more. Now with Atlanta, they were trailing pretty much the entire game. So what you end up seeing is 37 pass attempts from Desmond Ritter, where Ritter actually looks decent with those 37 pass attempts. He has 329 passing yards and you have a couple of viable options in this receiving game. Kyle Pitts leads this team with 11 targets. Drake London's there at nine. Johnny Smith is in there at seven. And if y'all don't know, I actually really like Kyle Pitts in round seven of underdog drafts this year. I mean, he was going next to those round seven wide receivers. He was going next to like the wide receiver 40, wide receiver 41. I was like, okay, I think Kyle Pitts can outscore these guys at the tight end position. Sign me up. And yeah, we have Kyle Pitts in a decent amount of teams. And honestly, I think this may be a sell hype moment on Kyle Pitts. Obviously, it's only if you get a superb price point. I'm recording this right before the San Fran game, so it's maybe not the best thing we can say right now. But like, if we go out there and sell him for George Kittle, unless Kittle gets injured in this game, probably a good play to make, probably a good move to have. Because if we look at this chart from PFF, all this snap data comes from PFF and these charts as well. You're going to see that the percentage of offensive snaps that you are getting from Kyle Pitts is just in a straight line down. Jonu Smith has 49 snaps in comparison to Kyle Pitts at 40. Jonu Smith runs 26 routes in comparison to Kyle Pitts at 25. Well, I mean, I'm excited about Pitts and the upside that he may have. Ultimately, can he be worthwhile in a spot where Jonu Smith has a role as well? No, I think the passing volume comes down in Atlanta. And as much as it pains me to say, if Jonu Smith has this kind of role, Kyle Pitts is probably a sell high. Now, going over to Carolina, Miles Sanders is bad. I mean, Chew Bubbard splits this backfield with him. Chew Bubbard, 34 snaps. Miles Sanders, 33. Neither guy is startable unless the other guy gets injured or we see a change in usage. Right now, it looks like Miles Sanders may not fully be healthy with Miles Sanders dealing with the groin. But regardless of the spot, you're not starting either player. And then going over to the receivers. Okay, I'm throwing in the towel. I mean, we ranked Adam Thielen, I think, as a low and wide receiver too this week. Adam Thielen looks like he is a mid to high and wide receiver too now. Like Adam Thielen, 13 targets. He does get there at the very end of the game with garbage time. Now, with that being said, garbage time points equal the same amount as regular points. So, I mean, obviously, if you are getting garbage time, you're still viable. And yeah, Adam Thielen, very interesting. And then on the Detroit side, Detroit's going to have an elite level offense no matter what. I actually thought it was a little crazy. The fact that Detroit was a nine and a half point favorite in this game over Carolina. That seemed normal to me. But then Amon Ross St. Brown was ruled out. Then you had no Jameer Gibbs. Then you had the report saying Jamison Williams was only playing 20 snaps. I went, okay. What, are they moving this down to an eight, eight and a half point line, um, seven and a half point line, uh, eight point line? What's this going to go to? Stayed at nine and a half. I was like, oh my gosh, wait, what, what's going on here, Vegas? And yeah, uh, no duh, Vegas sportsbooks know what they're doing. They're going, okay, Josh Reynolds will pick up the slack. Sam Laporta is freaking him. You have no pass catcher. Seeing more than six targets here for Detroit. Yet you have Jared Goff with 236 passing yards, three passing touchdowns. Jared Goff gives you the rushing touchdown as well. Get a rushing touchdown from Montgomery. Get a rushing touchdown from Craig Reynolds. Not worried about the Craig Reynolds usage or the snaps at all. Keep in mind, this was a complete blowout. Now, another complete blowout was the Giants side of things. Going over to the Giants. You have a Daniel Jones neck injury, and this is going to be something that we have to monitor. Because now you may have Tyre, Tyrod Taylor in with the New York Giants. And I know everybody's going to say, oh my gosh, Tyrod Taylor is in. That means nobody is startable. Nobody was startable anyway. This Giants team coming into this game was dead last in the NFL in total points scored. So yeah, going out of this game, I don't really think anything has changed. Maybe you're a little bit more excited about Darren Waller. It looks like Matt Breida is someone that is not viable even if you have no Saquon Barkley. Like Matt Breida leads this team in snaps with 43 at the running back position. But Eric Gray still has 30. Eric Gray leads the team in rushing. It's a horrendous offense. Nobody's really standing out from the pack. Darren Waller is a low to mid tight end one based off of volume. But nobody's exciting here. We'll keep you posted with the Daniel Jones injury. 
Going over to Miami, Devon Achan is him. Once Jeff Wilson Jr. was out of this game, I thought both Mostert and Achan were going to crush. But honestly, I was not expecting Achan to go out there and average 13.7 yards per carry yet again. It is the most obnoxious thing ever. I'm going to pull this up right now for you. And I'm going to try to do some historical research. I'll talk about this in a video later this week. I definitely want to have some time to look into it. Of how many running backs in NFL history have had this kind of start as Devon Achan. As he goes out there and his first breakout, 11.3 yards per carry. His second game, 12.6 yards per carry. His third game, 13.7 yards per carry. He has had 460 rushing yards off of 38 carries. That doesn't seem possible. The math does not check out. And the thing is, you may see the efficiency drop from Devon H. Han, but even if the efficiency drops, they may begin to give him more work because Raheem Mostert saw more snaps this week. Like Raheem Mostert saw 32 snaps in comparison to Devon H. Han at 26. So even if the efficiency does go down, if the volume goes up, he may be going out there and crushing regardless. Now, going over to Cincinnati, Joe Burrow is probably back. I don't want to say Joe Burrow is officially back and Joe Burrow is a top five quarterback yet again, but Joe Burrow is 317 passing yards. He gives you the three passing touchdowns. Joe Mixon gets there based off of volume with 25 carries, 81 rushing yards. And most importantly, Jamar Chase, immaculate. 15 receptions, 192 receiving yards, three receiving touchdowns. Looks like Chase is right there at the 102 next to Justin Jefferson. Someone we'll talk about in one second who's obviously dealing with an injury. And we're potentially in a spot where Jamar Chase now, I don't want to say leapfrogs Tyreek. Let's get some more data. Let's see Joe Burrow yet again. Obviously, you're starting him no matter what. It's just really, do we put him ahead of Tyreek in our rankings? It's more so just an ego thing. Is he at four? Is he at three? Is he at two? Uh, maybe at one with the Jefferson injury. We'll talk about it in a minute. Now, going over to Arizona, James Conner gets injured. So, a little frustrating here. Obviously, James Conner is playing on a team where he is playing for nothing. The Arizona Cardinals aren't going to win anything this year. It's a bad offense. He has an injury history. He's old. So... Nothing about this knee injury says that James Conner will rush himself back and James Conner will be good to go. I am going to dive into it a little bit more when it comes to the waiver wire video. The issue is my initial reaction is, okay, Keontae Ingram, fire him up. But Keontae Ingram was a healthy scratch for this game. There are a couple different running backs maybe you could look at. Rondell Moore may get used a little bit more as a rusher. So we're going to dive into it more for everybody, but it does not look good with the Arizona backfield. Going over to Philly, thank God. Oh my, Dallas Goddard does something. And now, one of the more embarrassing things up until this point is that Dar Dallas Goddard was my most drafted tight end this season. Going back to what we're talking about, I really like the round seven tight ends. Those guys that were going next, like the wide receiver 40. I was drafting a lot of pits. I was drafting a lot of Goddard this year. Oh, thank God. Jalen Hurts. Gets you the rushing touchdown per usual. Jalen Hurts gives you the 303 passing yards. A.J. Brown has himself a day, and Dallas Goddard does as well. We get the Dallas Goddard breakout. Could not be more excited about it. The reason I love Goddard is this is a tight end that's in an elite-level offense. And what you have seen from Goddard through his NFL career is every single season, he has gotten better with his receiving yards per game. Last year, he's a mid-tight end one. I was going, okay, if he's on a trajectory where every year he's gotten better of his career, Maybe he just needs to stay the same and he's going to crush in drafts. Way too early to say. We've had three dud weeks from Goddard. One blow up, but I, I'm just excited. And going over to the Rams, Cooper Cup is back. And Puka is there as a wide receiver one as well. We ranked both Cooper Cup and Puka's wide receiver ones in fantasy this week. We also took the fewer than Tyler Higby 40 receiving yards on underdog just based off of the volume that these wide receivers were going to take. Star both of them. 2-2 two -two at well. Gets lucky and has the receiving touchdown. Please don't be starting 2-2 out well going forward. Now, with the Jets, we got news earlier in the week that Brees Hall would no longer be on a snap count. And yeah, Brees Hall goes out there and freaking dominates. 22 carries, 177 rushing yards. The rushing touchdown, and he has three receptions as well. 
Now, what is so crazy to look at with Brees Hall is you have a total of 25 touches for Brees Hall. If you look at the amount of snaps that Brees Hall played, Brees Hall played 34 snaps. He had 25 touches off of 34 snaps. About 80% of the time he was on the field, they were giving the ball to Brees Hall. You would think the defense would just naturally understand that. Go, okay, Michael Carter Jr.'s out here. They're probably throwing it. Brees Hall is in here. They're probably giving it to Brees. Now, going forward, I don't expect like these snaps to be too predictive. I know Michael Carter had 20 snaps, but if you look at the PFF chart, and they all came on third down. They all came in the two-minute drill. It is Brees Hall's backfield going forward. Definitely don't expect it to be this good going forward. I mean, you go ahead and look at what you've had against the Broncos this season. You had Brian Robinson in week two with two touchdowns. You had Devon A. Chan and Reem Bostert with five touchdowns in week three. Khalil Herbert went over 100 yards in week four, and then now Brees Hall did this. A lot of this has to do with the matchup. Now, going over to Russ um, in Denver, tough matchup. Troutman, maybe he's viable. Jaleel looks like the best running back. I didn't know if we could start Jaleel because Javante was a game time decision. And I don't want to have to start Jaleel. Then Javante's active. And then you're a three-man running back by committee. It's interesting to see that Samaji Pirine, from a usage perspective, was the running back one. Samaji Pirine had 38 snaps compared to Jaleel at 21. Samaji Pirine ran 28 routes compared to Jaleel at 10. But doesn't matter. Pirine's not viable. No, Jaleel looked significantly better every time he touched the ball. But I think this next week, you probably have Javante good to go. Neither guy's an option. Now, going over to KC at Minnesota. The Chiefs are almost exclusively using Isaiah Pacheco at this point. Pacheco, 16 carries in comparison to McKinnon and Clyde edwards Lair combining for four. Isaiah Pacheco does only have one reception of the backfield, but still, nonetheless, Jared McKinnon only has two. Clyde edwards Lair has none. So it looks like this is 100% Isaiah Pacheco's backfield. Kelsey does Kelsey things. He actually has a low ankle sprain. Looks very scary because it's a non-contact injury. And then, of course, he comes back to the game. He just completely dominates. Not much to discuss. Rasheed Rice did have a touchdown. I understand a lot of people are super pumped to start Rasheed Rice. And we told a lot of people to bench Rasheed Rice. But I think that we can safely say, yeah, he's a player that has upside down there on your bench. And you should roster him for late in the season. To be completely honest with you, though, Rasheed Rice will still be a player that we are benching this next year. He is a wide receiver that just had five targets. Now, going over to the Minnesota side of things, Kirk Cousins, two touchdowns. Alexander Madison kind of splits with Akers. Talking about this one, Akers is traded. It's going to be a running back by committee. Nobody's viable. Think of it like Pittsburgh. And then you have Justin Jefferson with a hamstring injury. Something that we will need to continue to monitor. It sounds like Jefferson is going to miss time. So Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson are going to absolutely crush. KJ Osborne is probably a viable pickup if you need a high-end wide receiver three. Because we know the Minnesota Vikings are in play. It's in the cards for them to go out there and lead the NFL in total passing attempts each and every week. But I think that's all we have for this video. Again, thank you so much. If you have not done so already, go down there, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football. And my favorite pick em on underdog for tomorrow is going to be Christian Watson for more than 40 and a half receiving yards. Of course, use promo good flock on underdog. You're going to get a Jordan Love special pick em more than less than half a total yard if you're new to underdog fantasy. And also, it doesn't matter if you sign up to underdog two years ago, last year, today, yesterday, tomorrow. As long as you use promo good flock this week, you're also going to be getting a Justin Herbert special pick em more than less than half a total yard. My birthday's on Tuesday, and the best birthday present you could give me would be using promo good flock on underdog. But thank you again. I really do appreciate you. Really hope you have a great day, and really hope you get to see you out in the live stream on Monday.